Welcome to the You Can Man podcast, episode 32. I'm Josh. I'm Tim. And I'm Dave. And on this week's episode, The Keystone Carpenter. Yes, ma'am. Leslie wanted to hire a contractor to build a stage. I don't want to paint with a broad brush here, but every single contractor in the world is a miserable, incompetent thief. Oh, the Ron Swanson quotes. It's such a good one. It's a good quote. That's Ron Swanson from Parks and Recreation. If you're not familiar, uh, he obviously has a problem with contractors. Uh, And on this week's show, we have a good contractor. One of the good ones. Yeah, we wanted to... Have a little dichotomy. He's the there. one that was not painted by the broad brush there. <laughs> yeah, he's he escapes the wrath of Ron Swanson. Uh, so yep. this week's episode is going to be just a little different. We're not going to shoot the breeze like we normally do. We're just going to get into a phone call with the Keystone Carpenter. Yeah, we wanted to have enough time with him, so we're going to do that right after the break. This episode is sponsored by 1776 United. 1776 United is a patriotic and historically inspired lifestyle brand. They make the best patriotic shirts and apparel on the market today. I personally own many of their products, and if you want to don patriotic gear without looking gaudy, check them out on Instagram, Facebook, and at 1776united.com. Okay, guys, welcome back. We are here with the Keystone Carpenter, who uh, his real name is Brendan O'Sullivan. Uh, He's a carpenter contractor in Pennsylvania. Uh, Welcome, Brendan. Hey, guys. Brendan. Thanks for for having me. Hey, so thanks for coming on. So what part of uh, Pennsylvania are you in? I am in the Philadelphia suburbs, southeast uh, Pennsylvania. So basically about... 20 minutes outside the city. Did you grow up there? I did not. I grew up, I uh, actually grew up in Connecticut. Okay. Um, yeah. So I've been, uh, but I've been down here for, uh, I don't know, maybe 12, 12 years now, 10, 12 years, I'm trying to, 2005, six. How many years is that? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Four, 14 <laughs> we're all years. terrible at math. Yeah. Can't, can't think, help you. And from, yeah, what I've seen, Brendan, I think we're all about the same age here in this conversation. So, um, we can relate how those like mid two thousands get lost on us real quick. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's like, it's like all it? high school, college. That's right. It's forgettable. It's all a blur and just you move on. It really on. is. All, all the years just blur together during those like 2005 to eight, yeah. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they really do. So for our listeners, the reason we have Brendan on and Brendan, full disclosure, at the top of the show, we played a clip of Ron Swanson. I don't know if you're familiar with him from Parks and Rec. <laughs> I am. Um, Okay. And we we played his quote about contractors where um, he didn't want to paint with a broad brush, but he called on all contractors miserable thieves or something. Miserable and competent thieves. Right. And so we wanted to contrast that with the way you do contracting because uh, just by watching your Instagram account, which, by the way, is closing in on 19,000 followers. Oh, I saw that. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so congrats on that, Brendan. But Brendan, Thanks. I, uh, you know, I bought them all. So <laughs> hey, man, uh, so. there's nothing wrong with I'm that. Just kidding. They're Russian, just kidding. Russian bots. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So through Brendan's Instagram account, I mean, he just gives such a raw like day to day look at the ups and downs of contractor life and um, what an honest contractor looks like and seeing it from the other side, like from not the homeowner side, but from the contractor side. And it's just, it's so refreshing to watch, to know that there are good contractors out there. Um, but with that comes the the price of a good contractor, which you get what you pay for, right, Brennan? Yeah. Most, uh, most times in this, uh, yeah, in this life, it's kind of been what you have experienced. So, yeah. So what what has driven you to uh, be so exposed on Instagram? Because it would be way easier for you just to do your job well as a contractor. Yeah, but- just to keep your head down, just do your work and, you know, not not show everybody all the all the stuff that you're doing. Yeah, you certainly don't see a lot of that, right? 
Yeah. So what what pushes you on that, Brennan? Yeah, no, I, I, you know, it's, and I'll kind of take a quick step back. Uh, you know, it's, um, well, let me, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll touch on that. But um, in terms of the, the Instagram, I think I've just kind of followed the path that I initially kind of took with it. And that was originally when I, uh, I was uh, flipping a house or, yeah, uh, probably three years ago now. And um, basically used Instagram as a platform just to, start recording and, and documenting the process and then kind of the following just, um, started to grow from there. Um, so I didn't really have, uh, you know, my business totally up and running then I kind of took a little hiatus Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, you know, went the flipping route for a bit. Um, so I wasn't really using it as a tool for business or had a lot of, you know, clients or potential clients following me. So it was just kind of like a, you know, I don't really care type of thing. You know, let me just show you what I'm doing and who's ever watching, you know, great. Yeah, that that's awesome. So, I mean, so now it's kind of you, you, you've got this following and you kind of just don't want to leave it behind, I guess. You're, you're kind of just, just moving forward because people are, are liking the content. Yeah. I mean, right now it's, um, it's a pretty good business tool. Um, I, I wouldn't say all of my work comes from Instagram now, but a good chunk of it does. Um, so, you know, I don't like to say like I curate the content, but I can, I can, you know, put out there what I know potential clients are possibly thinking or, you know, what people in general are thinking, you know, about a project um, you know, or a price or timeline or whatever, and just try to use my, you know, project at hand as a, as an example of, you know, whatever it is that I'm, I'm trying to, you know, um, make a point to. Yeah. That, I mean, that is super smart because then your, your customer, your future customer can see how you operate, you're, yeah, you're setting expectations super early. Yeah, because they're not going to be looking over your shoulder because they've already seen your amazing work that they've seen on your Instagram stories. So they have full confidence in you that you're going to do an amazing job, which you do. So that's, I mean, that's awesome to, to show all of that for sure. I find it interesting. I, I guess it makes sense that you're, act, you, you can, you've quantified that you're actually driving, you have traffic driven to your business through Instagram, like through those posts. Is that right? Yeah, that's that's correct. Yeah. Um, I don't know the, the analytics of, you know, which leads or what, but um, most times, um, you know, when I ask people, they'll say, oh, you know, I found you on Instagram or they'll volunteer that information, you know, when they inquire. But yeah, it's uh, right now it's a it's a pretty much a, a lead generator for me when those leads come about, you know, I or, you know, how long those people have been following till when they actually um, you know, surface, I, I don't know. But um, I, I think it's a good way for people to vet me uh, to where they're not inviting, you know, a stranger in their house. And now they're having to choose, you know, between three bids, it's they can get a sense of who I am and the type of work I'm doing prior to me even going to their home. So it's a it's a good ice, you know, or a good vetting tool for them. Yeah. So what you're saying is that you're a contractor who actually cares. <laughs> I mean, essentially, it's just it's so weird to hear a contractor even talk like this, because so many of the interactions that we have had sitting around this table with contractors is absolutely nothing like what you're describing. You wanting the customer to know all the details of everything that goes into it and the quality of work and all of this stuff and you're showing everything it just doesn't compute it really (laughs) doesn't when we're thinking about contractors that that we've dealt with in the past so you're very very different yeah i mean you know i i I think i i think i have to say that instagram is somewhat of a a bubble in the sense that you know it's self-selecting yeah with people exposing Uh, what they want to expose true yes very true I think that are there other people out there that do a very, you know, do a very, very good job and, you know, are all about the customer and and showing that or I guess, you know, performing that but not, you know, necessarily showing it. Absolutely. But I think it just possibly makes the job a little bit harder in terms of the sale, Um, at least for someone who is not 100 percent established. Um, you know, who has 30 years experience and they're basically selling jobs off of referral and, and their reputation. That's another reason why, you know, I do it. It just, it helps with the, 
you know, it just makes the sale a little bit easier, not necessarily, you know, I just want to expose everything. I think it just gives a little bit more comfort to, to the potential client. That's great. Um, we, so that kind of takes us into to the main topic here, which is kind of the relationship between a homeowner and a contractor. Uh, and the, what we wanted to start out with was kind of your opinion. We each have our own opinion here around the table, but your opinion on why most, I believe, contractors struggle at, at running a good business or, you know, a, um, a business that's got customer first. Um, wh- why do you think it's a struggle in, in that industry in particular? And by the way, I'm a follower of like the Modern Craftsman and I listen to their podcast and I know those guys are a hundred percent customer focused, but, um, in the, they're, you know, you and them are outside the norm, but wh- why would you say, um, in your opinion, most contractors really struggle with that or just kind of ignore it altogether? Yeah, no, that's, uh, I, I think that's kind of a, a, a really, maybe not a one word answer question, but I, I think that, um, it's, it definitely has to do with maybe not having the skill set to really dive into the business to truly understand like, am I making a profit? Am I charging enough? Or am I just kind of doing this day in and day out to where it's just kind of beating me down? I don't even have the time and energy to even focus on that. So I'm just kind of in this perpetual cycle of, you know, just constantly getting work to feed the machine type of thing and just never slowing down. And it's just, just this, you know, constant hamster wheel of contractor just taking the job, doing as fast as they can, go on to the next one type of thing. Yeah, I feel like that's been my experience with crappy contractors before is that they're really only looking two weeks out. I yep. mean, it's like, if look, if, I got a, if I've got a job and, you know, the next week and a half, I'm good. And so they just are so short-sighted and they'll just – drop people and not, that's why they don't show up that's why they don't like send back uh when i you know request a a quote or something i mean there could be other reasons for that but it seems like they're just so consumed with what they have right in front of them that they're not taking into consideration the bigger picture and just those basic business skills it seems like yeah what is what is happening it kind of makes sense though i think brendan you mentioned um well, I can't remember exactly what it was that you said, but you know, when you're working as a contractor, I mean, you're working like a dog all day long, right? And so once you get that done, if you're running a business or building a brand, then it takes, you know, a bunch of extra effort. And so it makes sense that that would be, you know, that's kind of one of the things that gets lost. Yeah. And I, I think it's kind of, you know, there's many different aspects or, you know, perspectives of this as well, um, because, you know, you do have the guys that are hands on. Uh, that are kind of like what I described, which is just myself, you know, tool belt on, you're doing it all day, every day, and you're just kind of going, going, going. And then you also have the contractors that, um, you know, are hands off and subbing everything out um, where, you know, you, you would think like, okay, I, I have the time to kind of focus on the business. And I, and I don't mean to kind of jump all over the place here, but, you know, I, I think that if you take you know, the hands off, uh, approach, you know, then you have a little bit more perspective on, uh, or you're more aware of, okay, I need to make these numbers work, but am I also putting the emphasis on project management and quality control because I am hands off. So it's like, what are these subcontractors contractors doing? What are the employees doing? Um, so I think it's kind of a multifaceted question and just kind of like a, it's a little bit, more complicated than just, you know, why, why are most contractors a certain way type of thing? Um, and you know, it could be a three hour conversation, but (laughs) so, yeah. And I mean, I think that that's kind of the consensus here is there, there's just a, a a big lack of basic business knowledge of, of being, you know, playing the long game, uh, you know, you know, eating, possibly eating cost in one area, to fix a problem and make someone super happy and get their business and 10 other people's businesses instead of, you know, fighting 
tooth and nail just for that first that only that first paycheck and yeah moving on i was going to ask you brendan to kind of talk to us do you do you yourself use a lot of subs or have you at times for different jobs because i think that would be important to hear you talk about how you're choosing your subs because you're essentially in that well not not really in that consumer uh standpoint but what are those things that you're looking from looking for from the subcontractors when you're when you're hiring those guys yeah so um well let me touch on one last um i i'm sorry i forget who who just said it but um to, back to your point real quick um i think it comes down to who's in this for the long haul and reputation and name and whatnot um so with that said um i find i find it very important for you know for my business name and my personal reputation to be upheld so when it comes to subcontractors, I'm very, um, very cautious just because I've gone through, I won't say I've gone, I've gone through a lot. Um, I've gone through, you know, a, a decent amount in certain, in certain trades, um, but other trades I've, I've had the same one, you know, since I've started. Um, yeah. I, uh, to jump in, I, the, your, your tiling comes to mind because it's been an ongoing theme like Brendan does super 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 meticulous tile work and uh, from what it looks like on instagram you've always struggled to find a great tile person that's like up to your standards even though it take it takes you longer you still do it yourself because of that reputation yeah i, I think you know tiling specifically um it's it's hard to f it's hard to fake and it's hard to fudge like it's it's not like a miter where you can fill it with some some putty and then sand it and then you know, putty it and sand it again and then paint it and it looks decent. If you tile and kind of mess up, there's really no fix. Um, or if you, you know, don't do it well, there's, there's not a, a great fix to it. Yes. I've gone through, um, three or four tile guys, uh, over the past seven years. And, um, you know, not just because I've been, you know, super meticulous in terms of, you know, my standards are so high, it's just that, you know, the, the client has been not happy and I've had to rip mm. stuff out and it's, you know, things where you'd be like, okay, well, this should be very simple and straightforward. Right. And I don't know what the mentality is of the tile subs that I've used, but, um, you know, I just found it to be like, why isn't this getting done? You know, where the, the client's actually happy. So I took it on probably three years ago and and I've been so like nervous to, to relinquish that control because I've had bad ex experiences in the past and it's cost me, you know, a decent amount of money to, to fix. So that's why I kind of hold this one, uh, you know, close to me. Um, I, w I would like to give it up, but it's one of those things where you're just kind of like, ah, you know, do I want to do I want to go down that that path again? Yeah. And that's why um, it becomes that's why it's so tough to as a homeowner because you're getting one shot you know at hiring that right person and, and even if you go off of referrals you know you're you are getting basically one take with this guy um and that's been the frustration for me at least you know i've I've had, you know, multi, multi thousand dollar mistakes made. Um, I've had to fire contractors on, you know, $14,000 jobs before. You mean like that time that the guy started pouring the concrete that was already setting up in the truck? Yeah. You that, mean like that time? <laughs> yeah, that's not even the one I'm thinking about, but yes. So, oh, you know, man. and it, it was someone that I, I, you know, someone who... I called multiple references, which I'd never really done in my life. And he got glowing reviews. And well, so Josh, and I, I don't know what to tell you, but we all make mistakes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> so we, uh, anyway, I, I guess my point is, yeah, as a homeowner, how would, how would you suggest or recommend uh, outside yeah. of referrals? There's only so far you can go, but and what are those red flags? Like if I, if I hear this from a contractor run, if there's anything like that, yeah, just kind of a basic, you know, we're putting you on the spot here, but ju just a, just a couple points of a, if you're a homeowner seeking out a good contractor, what are, what are the top couple things? You know, I would say in this day and age, it's probably, and this is not for, there's definitely going to be the outliers in, in this, but, you know, in this day and age, I feel like keeping up a, a solid online presence, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be social media, but, you know, at least like, you know, keeping your, your house and review Google's up. Uh, Google reviews up, 
um, you know, an updated website. It just kind of shows that, you know, though it may not be a huge, you know, business driver for you, it just kind of shows that you care what the face of your company looks like mm. uh, because, you know, online is, is just pretty much what everyone goes to these days. Um, so, I, you know, I would say, again, not to say that's for everybody, but um, I would say, a, you know, a decent online presence to where, you know, they're, they're putting a few dollars into their marketing uh, in terms of a website. And, you know, it's not just a park, you know, a landing page and, and whatnot, um, you know, and then in terms of what else to look for, you know, it's, it's difficult because like, I don't find myself to be, you know, the, the best salesperson. Um, so, you know, I, I try to just let my work speak for itself. And I guess that kind of goes back to, to the, you know, my point of, you know, I, I use the online presence to just show people, Hey, this is what you're going to get. So, yeah, I mean, I may not be the best, <laughs> the best person to answer this question because my, you know, my approach is probably a lot different than what most most homeowners are looking for. <laughs> well, I think what you said, your main thing about just having a website. Uh, I work in construction, and there are a lot of good contractors out there. But I'll go and look at a contractor's website, and sometimes it's like a weird. There's not even a website, or there's like a weird domain. Don name it's like you know Angel Fire or something just super bizarre, and that they're like, well, it doesn't, there's not an address. There might be a PO box, and so I get what you're saying about just having a you know kind of a well maintained website and just having yeah. that presence out there because, like you said, that's really where everybody's going to you know look up companies and look and do researches online. And it shows that they're not only focused on the the day to day grind. They actually have like a big picture perspective of their business, like they've taken the time to, to put that online presence out there, which is kind of a big step in and of itself for a lot of contractors. Um, yeah, and I, I think that's what I was I was kind of going for. You, you answered that better than I, I did. Um, but yeah, it, it just, it, I feel like the online presence and the reviews, it just kind of holds you a little bit more accountable for like showing that, hey, like I want to uphold my reputation here and you know, if I have one bad review, like that's, that's going to be a big deal. And that's going to tarnish, you know, my, my business name, and I want to make that better. And I want to correct it. Um, so yeah. All right. Yeah. So answer, uh, talk to us about this, about uh, your relationship with the customer. So uh, when you enter into a contract, say you're redoing somebody's bathroom, what are those things that you're working through with the customer on the front end? Uh, that like, how much communication are you doing? Like, how much on a daily basis are you communicating with the with the customer and that sort of thing? And so, like, for for our listeners, when they're thinking through a contractor and they're asking the question, okay, when are you going to talk to me about you know the project management of what you're doing? So, how much how much interaction do you have in that regard? So I. I try to, uh, in terms of like communication, uh, in the beginning, I, I guess to clarify, are you talking about, we've already entered into a contract and what are the next steps or right. is this before, uh, before well, winning the, kinda, the job? Yeah. Kind of before and during, I guess on the front end, I guess before they even sign, I guess, yeah, you're right. You, you would give some sort of expectation of this is how much we're going to communicate and this is how we're going to go through and make uh, decisions or change orders and stuff like that. Because I feel like in the past when I've worked with contractors, there hasn't really been a whole lot of talk about that. It's just like, oh, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do this. And that's it. And then like, I don't hear from them. And then, the, you know, it's 10 o'clock the next morning. And they said that they were supposed to be there at eight, and they're not there. And then, you know, I, just all kinds of stuff like this, where it's, you know, it's my fault as well for not getting that out of them, but it's really on them because they never communicated with me to begin with. So I just kind of wanted to hear how you approach that. Yeah. So, you know, I think in terms of like the job itself, laying out the details, um, we do a lot of that beforehand. Um, you know, I, I won't spend a lot of time and energy on, on that if I haven't won the job yet, but I think in terms of laying out the process of, of how the job is going to go in general, you know, I'll do that pretty briefly if we're, you know, communicating via email or in person, if we do meet. Um, but once, once I do win, win the job, I will, you know, basically say, Hey, listen, you know, in terms of all the material, 
all the finishes, everything for the project, you know, those will need to be on site prior to me starting. Um, and then basically once we have all of those and the decisions in the field need to be made, I will be checking in with you either in the morning or in the evening to go over any details or via text uh, and pictures if a decision in the field needs to be made relatively uh, quick. Um, so I over communicate with my clients just because there are so many little decisions that you may just say, this is what I would do, or you just kind of like defer to yourself. But in reality, the client may have a different opinion. That's that's one I've run into a lot. <laughs> yeah, that one in particular. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I will say that a lot of my clients do defer to to me. But I, I also have some clients that, you know, they they really just need to hash it out and exhaust all options for, you know, the tiniest little decision because they're spending a lot of money on a space and they want to make sure it's just right. Mm -hmm. Um, and my, you know, contractor carpenter, you know, view of something may not always be the best, um, because I'm not a designer. I'm not, and, and I, again, I'm in it all day long. So you can, you can kind of have, um, you know, somewhat blinded view um, or, you know, you, you may not necessarily see the best option because you're so close to it, mm -hmm. uh, to where, you know, they may see something that it affects them a little bit differently and they may want it a certain way and you may not necessarily see that. So that's, that's what I usually do in terms of communication is I, I over communicate and I, I check in with them. Um, I only do one job at a time. So, in, so back to what you were saying about, am I going to show up and be there the next day unless I'm sick or there's an emergency, we're, you know, we're there every single day. There's no multiple projects going on at the same time, just because we charge accordingly to where we can focus on your job and your job only. Yeah, that's, that's great. I mean, you're in such a great position um, by, you know, having your, your Instagram out there, people knowing what to expect. Um, you're, you're kind of in a and I know you deal with your own <laughs> business struggles, I'm sure, but you know you're in a position where you can charge, you know, kind of what you need to charge for for these a lot of these remodels that you're doing. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch us kind of into a, a closing gear here with a, a question about. So, um, if you're interested in Brendan's work, he does what I consider high end uh, bathroom remodels for regular Joe that may not have high-end bathroom remodel money let's say uh, but he does have some skills he or she has some skills um, to do do some improvements on their own where would you focus Brendan if if you're giving advice to a homeowner that wanted to kind of freshen up their bathroom themselves where would where would you tell them to focus and what would you tell them to avoid I I would probably focus on more of the cosmetic things um I, I say that because, and, and I guess cosmetic meaning, you know, maybe a vanity, maybe some hardware, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe you can do some fl um, floating flooring over your existing. But again, depending on their skill level, once you start pulling down shower walls and taking up, you know, tile floors and stuff like that, that's when, you know, things can really start to get, um, you know, pretty involved and in depth and not to say that, you know, homeowners won't be able to handle that. Mm -hmm. But you do you do start to encounter a lot when you start demoing, um, and it can it can really escalate the cost and the frustration very quickly. So I, I think it really just comes down to the person's skill level and their ability and willingness to teach themselves uh, and, and dive into knowing what they're going to get into and how to do it before they actually do it. Because you can open up a can of worms once you once you start up. Uh, a bathroom project. Yeah, I mean, you um, start you start ripping up tile, and that's when you find that the uh, subfloor is rotten. <laughs> you know. Yep. Or now you're you know you want to take your tub out and do a shower, and that's a whole other animal in itself. Or you know, so it's yeah. Um, I, I think it really comes down to the person's skill level and their their willingness to 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 do the research on how to uh, tackle their project. Now, I mean, if you're just talking DIY, you know, I would say. You know, best bet is, you know, a vanity, some paint, um, hardware, you know, things like that. Uh, that's probably going to be your easiest way to freshen up a space. 
Yeah, it's so interesting. I, you know, I, I consider myself pretty handy, and I've done, I've flipped a house and remodeled multiple bathrooms myself, and I, you know, feeling a little competent. And then I'll go like watch what you're getting into, and I'm like, oh, that's how you're supposed to do yeah. X, Y, Z. I mean, so. it's it's just an entirely new level. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it just it just doesn't even compare. I'm like, when I watch your stuff, I'm like. Wow. Okay. So that that's actually how you're supposed He's to do that. He's different. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it comes with a lot of mistakes over the over the years. Yeah, that's what uh, I like, uh, Brendan. <laughs> I mean, when he started, and I haven't been fo- I've been following you a little over two years, I think. But you mentioned on the Modern Craftsman podcast about how you you took your lumps on Instagram because when he started when you started your business you were putting everything out there and people were straight up being like, Hey, that's not how you do that. <laughs> and instead of, you know, arguing or tucking your tail, you just said, okay, I, I shall make this correct. And, but that's what it takes to do it. Right. Yeah. No, it, it, it yeah. When, especially when we put stuff out online, it, you know, expect. Oh, you're going to get the key bangers, imagine. right? The key bangers are coming out and they're oh, angry. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The, tro- sure. the trolls are out in full force. <laughs> and I have to ask you, or I have to tell you, Brendan, you have changed my life. You've used laser levels forever, but I recently (laughs) got one and oh my gosh, it has changed the way I do projects. It's so awesome. They really, I I surprisingly have only owned one for about three years now. Okay. I don't feel too bad uh, then. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, there are certain tools that it's just like, wow, why have I not owned this thing years ago? They really are game changers, certain, certain things. Yeah. What so. would you say is like your most valuable top three tools of something that you just use every single day that you absolutely love that you could not do your job without? Oh, man. Well, if you want to say game changer versus what I use every day. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, whatever you want. I mean, game changer. Yeah, game changer is probably more a little bit more exciting because you're probably going to be like, oh, travel. <laughs> yeah. Can but, I use my hammer a lot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I will say the track saw. Uh, 100%. Yes. I want um, one so bad. You know, I, I, I still talk to a lot of guys who are like, ooh, yeah, but it's like 500 bucks. I'm like, do you not equate what time equals? <laughs> like, yeah. Are, do you not understand? Uh, how, you know, and you get it's a much better result. So, yeah, as soon as I bought that thing, it was it was amazing. I will say in terms of the work that I do for filtration is the, the Build Clean Air Scrubber. Um, that is completely changed the way I've approached remodeling and that clients kind of view the whole remodeling process. Yeah, that's so you, you mean you actually care about not getting dust in people's houses? <laughs> Dang. We still get a little bit, but it, it it is from from plastic in a box fan of what I, you know, was used to growing up with my dad. It's like, man, it's it's it is truly a game changing tool. Well, we'll go with two if that works. Um, yeah. And I know uh, yeah. I, I'll mention we, we talked about power tools on our last episode. I think you're a Makita guy. Is that correct? He's a Makita with, guy because he's a, he's smart. OK, <laughs> I'm, I'm Makita and DeWalt. I, I would okay. say I have more DeWalt than I do Makita, but I'm I'm slowly building the Makita platform. OK, OK. That's what I suspected. Yeah. Dave here is a Makita guy. Die well. hard. Yeah. Well, Brendan, we're going to we're going to wrap it up here. It's just it's been awesome to have you on. Thanks for taking time out of your evening to uh record with us and give give a little more insights. Um, I've actually got at least one more topic for the future, if you'd be willing to come back on that I think you'd be perfect for. And yeah, we just have enjoyed having you. So if people want to find the Keystone Carpenter, where do they go to check them out? Uh, You can find me uh, on Instagram at the Keystone Carpenter, um, as well as uh, my website, khrhomes.com or keystonehomeremodeling.com. Uh, Facebook, um, just kind of default, but, um, I'm on Facebook as well. So awesome. And key Pennsylvania is the Keystone state. Is that right? It is. Is that yes. what Keystone uh, is? I okay. didn't know that. I, yeah. I thought okay. that yeah, that's, together. All right. That's yeah. Kind of, kind of how we came up with it. So <laughs> very cool. Well, Brendan, uh, enjoy your evening and thanks again. We've really enjoyed it. Hey, thanks guys. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, man. All right. Take care. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this week's show. No segment this week, uh, but don't you worry. I've got an absolute gym. Tim's bringing the heat. 
Um, if you know, okay, so let me just say my last couple ones were on the history of kudzu and the demise of the American chestnut, American chestnut tree. Well, I did the Ford trivia too. So there yeah, was yeah. that. So this time we're going to be watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, so, we want to hear from you guys on, on the segments yeah. because these are completely unrelated, uh, to DIY stuff. So if you want to hear something that you think is crazy, or you want to just share something with us that we can research further, that would be awesome. Okay. Yes. But I, I do I do already have my topic for next time. I just got to research it a little bit more. What was that, Josh? I, I want to go ahead and say that today, the world-famous YouTube channel called Today I Learned released a video about the Boston Molassacre that I mentioned in yeah. my Liquid Death segment. It's That's because amazing. They it's because they're listening. Yeah, they they were listening yeah. to the You Can Man They're about show. to pick us up. Yeah. That's, uh-huh. my, that's my feeling. Yeah, right, yeah. right. I feel yeah. it. Anyways, that's going to do it for this week. Guys, as we've been saying, check out the Facebook group. There's so much stuff happening there uh, every week. Guys posting stuff of stuff they're working on and people giving actual valuable feedback on their projects. And so I've really enjoyed, um, you know, it's a super helpful community already. It it honestly is. We know we don't have a ton of people on there yet, but it is slowly growing It's in the hundreds. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely check that out. And hey, Take some time. Give us a review on Apple Podcasts. We'll see you guys next time. 